Excellent. Looks like you all can. Well, let's get on the way. Um, it's great. There's not a lot of people on this, which is good. I kind of this kind of thing is always good to get people who are really serious. Um, I'm very excited to be sharing on this because I know a lot of people have been talking to us about income streams and ways to develop them. And one of the things we we found from having done healings and learning to help people, first we did it just because we wanted to do it for ourselves, but eventually we realized that making a difference and helping others. And certainly in this current time, we're living in some pretty crazy times um, and cost of living shooting up. Who, who is on here because you're pretty keen to learn to find a way to make income online, basically, and just find another way of making income, doing something a bit different, but it's on the cutting edge. Just type a why, if that's kind of why you're here. <laughs> Christine, hell yeah, I like that, Christine. That's very serious. Yeah, so ways to generate income doing this stuff, what you love. Because yeah, look, it's it's a great way to make make income. And certainly for William, he's been, this is how he makes his income, literally doing this. Who else? Just type a me if that's definitely you. If you're on here because you are genuinely interested in the idea of not of, of, of making income and also of learning to heal yourself. Because visceric medicine and energy healing is definitely, I think, the cutting edge of medicine and more and more starting to move away um, from what's been getting done for years and the physical, especially as we're moving more and more to online. I can remember a kinesiologist adamant telling me that Unless you're there physically with me, it doesn't work. Now this same one does online kinesiology where she muscle tests from a distance. I've tested doing acupuncture on myself just by using needles and etheric medicine energetically had just the same results. So um, definitely wanting to open this up to show you possibilities of this and ways to do it. Just type out um, me if you're more interested in learning to do this for yourself and your family. Just you really wanna learn how to heal yourself to save yourself money, um, make a difference for yourself and just your family. Just type out me if that's you. That's the main reason you're here. Yeah, more to help yourself. Yeah, originally that was why I did it. I first did it mainly for me and my family, but as time went on, I realized I could do it for others as well. So absolutely. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce um, basically... I'm going to basically introduce William. William is my son, who, as I said, he he started on the road to magic very young. I can remember he'll share his story about his own healing and his own interest in transformation, how it changed his life and how he got into energy healing, which changed his life on so many levels. And he got into magic to the point where he was going around doing busking and things like that, doing magic tricks, taught himself online, end up on Today Tonight, and pretty much has never really had a normal job in terms of outside of doing this. He's been a healer and doing this since he was young. So William has done me very proud. I mean, he's my son, but also I, as he and I admit now, agree. He's a 22 year old guy. He's way beyond just being under me as a father. And as I said to him, our relationship now is very much based on the fact that we more work together now in this kind of stuff and by choice and 23. Oh yeah, you are too. That's right. You've jumped a year. Time keeps flying. So William has kind of done very, very well in this. In some areas, he's already surpassed me. And I go to him and get scanning and learn some stuff from him after originally teaching him this stuff. So it, I have clients raving about him. There are many who work with him even now. So really, it's a great pleasure, but I'm going to hand over to him to run this webinar. I'll be coming in and out on the camera. I'm mainly not going to steal his funder and let him share about the future of etheric medicine um, how it's working and why, honestly, we believe this is such a unique opportunity for one, learning to kind of get in the cutting edge for yourself and your family, but two, to even possibly do it for other people. I find that, as my Cairo said to me the other day, he goes, it's very useful how you can work, so you work out what's going on and save me a lot of time and tell me what needs adjusting. Sometimes I'm able to fix myself without even seeing him. So without further ado, William, I'm going to hand over to you. Thanks. Thank you very much. All right. Excellent. Well, thanks, Warren. And uh, I th thank you, all, everyone, for taking the time, effort, commitment and investment to joining this webinar today. So just type a Y in the text chat if you can hear me OK. Brilliant. Now, without further ado, let's get started with the webinar.
first covering what you'll be learning today, starting with the well-known link between our etheric or energetic body and our physical body, how to clear the source of any sicknesses, disease, and poverty etherically or in the energy body right before it manifests in the physical world to unlock and embody the blueprint of, of perfect health. Also, a clear examination of how unseen blockages, self-sabotage, negative mental programming, and the less-than-ideal energies hide in the unconscious, why most healers have absolutely no clue how to clear them. We'll also be um, covering how to shield yourself and your clients from unhelpful energies, blocking the path to accessing higher realms, and why knowing this is crucial for being able to heal humanity and Earth. The five practical steps for anyone to start a successful business as an etheric body healer, to make good money doing what it is you love, being able to serve and heal humanity without fear, guilt, stress, or overwhelm. Why Ken Wilber, in his book, The Religion of Tomorrow, has predicted etheric body healing to be the next medicinal revolution in humanity, or in other words, the new medicine, new religion. Why right now is a time of massive opportunity to become an etheric healer and make some serious cash in this time of crisis, economic collapse and awakening. All right, now here's my promise to you. So this training or webinar shows you how to be a successful etheric body healer and generate stable income by working as a certified master healer. At the end of this training, I'll be making a very exciting offer to be up front to attend a healing certification program to become a qualified healer by participating in the next revolution of medicine, being able to generate a consistent income from it. Now, even if you don't get this offer, I'm supremely confident you will get tremendous value in this class today. All right, now we'll go through a few different scenarios here of does this sound like you, does it relate to where you're at right now? Number one, you're stuck in a job or business you hate. Number two, you're not doing what it is you truly love. Third, you're not passionate about your current career and seeking to become a healer. Four, you're committed to doing something about it if someone can show you the way. So just type in the text chat one, two, three, or four, whichever of those resonates with where you're at right now. And I'll show them once more if in case anyone didn't get them. So one, stuck in a job or business you hate. Second, not doing what you love. Third one, that you're not passionate about your current career and seeking to become a healer. Fourth one, you're committed to doing something about it if someone can show you the way. Josh says four, Scott says one and two, Christine four, Priscilla one, two, three, and four. Gosh, that's quite a mix there, Priscilla. So it's interesting here. We've got quite a few fours, got some ones and twos. Okay, um, uh, so this quote just about sums up um, auric clearing, sums up um, etheric healing as a whole, basically. Everything is energy, and energy can be transformed. A quote by one of the healers or mentors I learned from, Master Raymond Grace, who, who of course, um, has quoted this many times, how energy can be transformed, and that um, although we're all made up of different um, personalities as people, and uh, all these different buildings, and we all have different physical appearances, and the, the nature, the earth, although it's all like different complexities that make up this existence, at the, at the end of it, it all returns to the same substance, which is energy. And the energy can be transformed, as especially as there is the now. 
Okay, now, um, can you relate to this? You have an unrelenting passion to serve the planet and humanity, activate the grids, and bring in the fifth dimensional ascension to Earth, heaven to Earth. You're keen to be part of a new evolution of healing of the etheric body, as well as the physical body, while activating the indigos then you're not doing what you love and are committed to making a sustainable income while fulfilling your passion. Just type a Y in the chat if so. So um, just to be clear, the indigos are like the higher star seeds or, um, the ch or children of, um, of God, the higher masters who have been sent here to raise the consciousness or the energy of humanity now that's that would be an entire course in itself but that sums it up for those who may not know about them and then the fifth dimensional earth refers to like um a higher realm or like a more loving and balanced way of existence as opposed to this tyrannical um this tyrannical cat catastrophic type of um, high taxes, high cost of living type of bullshit we're living in right now. So Christine says yes for one. Excellent. Scott, I did some indigo tests and ranged between 80 to 90%. Yes, and you would definitely know if you're an indigo or something of that nature. Um, indigos are very drawn to this work. So um, people who are not drawn to this work um, would be what you would classify as an angelic human or like an average joke, or if not, more called for job or business. As, a quick, uh, to interrupt, uh, William, just a quick one. If anyone here doesn't have any idea what we're talking about with fifth dimensional ascension or indigos, just type a me. No need to feel stupid. Just want to make sure because some people do know what this means. Some, some this is quite new. Like if you want, Warwick's got no idea. Anyone else who just doesn't know what this means? And would like a bit more explanation on this. Does everyone else get it pretty well? Few. Okay, few. Yeah. So William, just yeah, so that would be useful to share just a little bit more about that, you know, what what it means about the grids and fifth dimensional ascension and just part of this whole change of consciousness that we're all part of at the moment, as well as the etheric body. Just a little bit, not in too much depth, just enough to cover the basics. Mm. Oh, yes. Yeah. So um, uh, what it means here by activating the grids is like um, activating or purifying the energy fields of the earth, which, of course, have been corrupted by um, the darker cult or um, dark, all of the darker beings or people with less than um, good intentions seeking to enslave and, of course, um, uh, that enslave and of course um uh, impoverish humanity so i'm um, activating the grids is about purifying returning them back to how they're meant to be and bringing in the fifth dimensional ascension to earth meaning that right now we're in we're in the midst of a huge consciousness or energy leap um or growth so hence the term awakening and basically, the, what, where, um, where it's at right now, what it's saying is that, well, those who shift and evolve um, with this awakening time and consciousness growth will get to be part of this new fifth dimensional Earth. But where, where of course, it will be a loving and balanced one, um, where, you don't, where you don't have too much light or too much darkness, but where it's balanced and where everyone works together with one another. And where it's no longer um, a hierarchy where everyone is seeking to rip each other off and prop, put each other down to prop themselves up type of thing. So like, for example, during COVID, when me and Warren were actually seeing real changes, as we, we, we did this, we were doing clearings and activating the grids of our state in Western Australia. And well, you would remember, Warren, that... The next day, the premiers and politicians would get up and say word for word what we spoke in our clearing sessions, and um, there was also and uh, there was a time in that period where um, the vaccine mandates, for example, didn't um, come to WA until me and Warren were called to lift the protection and let things play out for a while, and I'm sure you'd remember that clearly, right, Warren? 
Oh, absolutely. No, it was quite profound. Uh, we did a lot of work with Raymond Grace and with masters like Ed Stratcher, Toby Alexander, and learning about this stuff. And it was profound. Whenever we would activate the grids, I can remember when we had a particularly bad period in WA and we went and did some work to activate the grids and work on the chakras of the earth and of our local area. And I got a lot of people working on it. And I think within a day, I mean, everyone was talking about the miraculous change in the government's attitude towards things and just how things just suddenly shifted where we were. And many people report very similar stories. So as well as healing yourself, you can use this to make a real difference in your area, especially as governments start to do crazy stuff. And even now, five days a week, we have people, and I notice that Christine, she's part of that group. We have people here right now who every day meet up online at 8.30 in the morning, Eastern Standard Time, and they specifically do work to raise the energy of their cities and activate the grid. So we do this daily. So it's part of activating the etheric body of the earth as well as basically for ourselves. So this kind of stuff, as you do this, can help not only heal yourselves and heal your families, but make a real difference in your area and make a potential big difference to stop the full effect of the new world order hitting where you're at. We've seen some profound results in doing this. So, yeah, absolutely. So hopefully Brilliant. that explains a bit. I hope that explains in enough simple terms to people. I mean, this is a whole learning in itself, but hopefully that gives people enough for you know to keep going. Yes, and we'll be covering this um a bit more in later in the webinar anyway, especially with the consciousness preceding matter. Um, well, as well, when the energy of the grid is out of balance, everything gets affected. And uh, and then, of course, the indigos, like we talked about, are like the highest star seeds or souls from other planets, other galaxies, which who have been sent here to raise the consciousness of of humanity of the planet. So anyway, we'll continue on. Now I have a few questions for you. Do you hate um your present career where you're at right now? Are you desiring an extra stream of income? Are you passionate about healing people? Just type Y in the chat if so. All right, excellent. So if so, um, we've got some great news. Um, you can become a certified master healer. So um, uh, so any so anyone if they put the work and the dedication, the commitment in, can become a master certified healer, and have it as a career as another source of income. But with all the craziness of mental health struggles, wars rising death rates and all kinds of cataclysms happening across the planet as well as the rising costs of living which are ever going up that really there has never been a better time to, than now to become a healer and become and have that as an extra stream of income so um, that, and that then of course serving and healing humanity on a big scale all right, now what we'll do is I'll share my story just before we get into the next stages of the webinar. Now, growing up, it wasn't the easiest time for me as I was a walking ball of pain and anger due to feeling devoid of love. So um, uh, my parents were always like spiritual masters to me, um, which was always there and hence why the, the foundations of my clearing work go all the way back to basically my birth or near it but the mother fatherly love on the um human level that was not present so um of course that left me feeling um a lot of hurt and a lot of rage and uh, then and then when they separated when I was nine it didn't make things any easier and uh, there was a lot I had to go through before I was able to heal and straighten out from it so um, uh, we, um, since then, of course, um, once I grew older, I was able to understand that they'd been traumatized, they'd been unloved as well, and that they were giving the best that they were capable of giving during that period. Since then, we've taught, resolved things, and the relationship is better than ever. And I went to normal school until eighth grade as well. 
and my parents ended up pulling me out of there due to the depression and suicidal thoughts I was experiencing by being there. Um, Warren actually learned from a guy, Ed Stratcher, from the Philippines, and he, and he'd done a, a clearing on me when I was 13, which set me free of my depression and my suicidal thoughts. And that was what sparked my unrelenting hunger and passion for this work. Um, it was more than a life purpose for me. It gave me a reason to live, to be here. And so I then got homeschooled from year nine to 11 and became a lot happier and learned a lot more than I did during my whole, whole um, term in school. Um, I ended up doing busking in Fremantle markets using card magic as well as selling magic products. And I never needed to get a job. I did that from uh, 15 to 17. I even did Cert 3 in business admin during my final year of schooling in year 12. Um, I, and uh, my busking business actually got me on Today Tonight, like Warren mentioned at the beginning of the webinar in 2017 through my business mentors at the time. And what I do now is helping people to clear their blockages, negative energy imprints, trauma, and transform their lives. So um, I do that, I not only do the clearing for them, but I also teach the spiritual and esoteric, um, as well as teaching them how to do clearings themselves. So where I not only clear them, but give them the necessary tools to be able to do it themselves. All right, moving on, what it takes to become a healer. Now, um, becoming a healer is not what a lot of people would expect. The huge issue we have is that um, many healers um, have a sense of live, not living the higher purpose for financial reasons. So just type a Y in the chat if that's been you. And uh, so in things like conditioning, upbringing and society means we're not often doing it, we're, that we, we're often doing, not doing what we'd like to truly do. So instead, we end up doing a job or something our parents or society told us was the path to get ahead. Um, so the real you may desire to serve Earth and help humanity instead of being stuck in a day job you don't really like. But unfortunately, like anything, without finances, it makes us a lame duck. Um, in other words, we end up in a job or doing things we don't want to be doing. So, and when you do what you hate, you feel trapped, stuck, miserable, frustrated, and out of purpose. This, of course, is not the way the source of God intended our life to be. Uh, with career, with our purpose, what we do, it's supposed to bring us joy. It's supposed to invigorate us, not suck the life out of us and slowly kill us off until we reach 70, 80 odd years. Um, uh, um, like in the Bible, for example, in the case of Methuselah, he lived up to 969 years old. And then Noah himself lived over 900 years, um, as did a lot, of the, um, a lot of the great men and women um, in the ancient times. Um, so right now, there is an urgency to resolve our own personal karma, as well as the karma of humanity, to complete our mission and help Earth to ascend before things get a lot worse than they have already. There's a good reason Earth and humanity is in the shit right now. And as we've seen, there's a need to activate the grids on the planet in order for Earth to be able to ascend to the fifth dimension. So really, it's all hands on deck right now for light workers. The war between the Sons of Light versus Sons of Darkness is very much underway. The Bible has even said the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. In other words, it's not the time to be passive and do nothing. It's time to be violent and take what's rightfully ours, take action and restore righteousness. Ultimately, becoming a healer is a wonderful and a beautiful path. That being said, you, you may have all the skills in the world be able to clear people's blockages no matter what, how strong or how weak they are. You could even be humanity's next version of Jesus himself and do miracles even greater than him. But, and I'll emphasize this as a big but, if you haven't learned to make money from your healing and have a business type of mind, 
inevitably you will be forced into a job doing something you hate to make income to meet your daily needs. Unfortunately, this is all too common for a lot of healers out there. Many people are stuck in jobs they hate and don't know how to break out of it. They don't even know how to run their healing as a legitimate business. Then, so Scott says, I'm well suited to and enjoy my work when dealing with people with integrity. Unfortunately, that's rare in my field, and this pulls me down. Yeah, um, it can be like that. It's very easy to become disillusioned or um, losing faith where, um, in this practice, especially when um, people who do this don't have integrity. Unfortunately, there are too many of them out there. The biggest thing, though, is to not not let what they've done affect you. So, in, in other words, people like that can be a learning tool for you as to what not to do, and and you then just um you then just do it with integrity. Ultimately, when it comes to doing the right thing, it's about doing it because it's the right thing to do, whether it works out or not, which is what most people fail to recognize. But even worse is if people use outdated modes of healing which just don't work and apart from leaving people with a good feeling more like a high that you would feel after watching a great netflix movie or eating popcorn um it doesn't fix the problem the client came to them for in the first place and that too is a, um, a very common aspect to people who do do this healing work but who don't make a lot from it so the sad reality is many gifted healers are stuck doing jobs or businesses they hate. Money, of course, poses a real challenge for them in becoming a healer as a profession. Here's why. Money, of course, must come from somewhere. I mean, well, it's not like healers um, uh, um, are like um, spiritual, non-physical beings who can basically live without food, water, shelter, and all the basic stuff that the rest of humanity needs. Truth is, healers to also need to be able to eat, to drink, have clothes on their back, have a roof over their head. They end up stuck in a job they hate with absolutely no time to master their healing craft. So this is the problem, is that when they're doing a job or business they don't like, then they don't have any time to master their healing craft, what they really love to do. So they end up feeling exhausted with little to no energy and miserable. This, of course, is what happens when you're in a job that you hate. Even if they don't have that problem, they may not be certain where to start to make healing a legitimate profession. Why is this? Because they have no real business background and that they and they haven't had experience and don't know where to start or what steps to put in place. Um, they, they, and they also don't know the basics, like how to get clients, how to structure their business, or how to make money. So my question to you is, how would you like, um, how would you like to be on the cutting edge of a new revolution which is underway right now? Type Y in the chat if so. All right, Christine, yep, love it, Carmen. Scott, definitely would like to know more. Brilliant. This is great. It's great to see everyone here so keen. We'll continue on. And uh, right now could not be a better time to participate in the new revolution during the early stages. Now, I'm sure you've wondered what it would be like to be part of something new in the early stages, such as being the founder of a new network marketing or be on the cutting edge of a new investment. Or perhaps even with current corporations, like what if you were there um, during the early stages of Apple or Netflix, um, rather than always being late to the party. Now here's the great and exciting news. You do have that opportunity here. Etheric medicine, as Ken Wilber said, is the next phase of evolution for humanity with healing. As of yet, it's still relatively new and untapped market. Not only that, it is still by and large unregulated, which is also a huge advantage. Physical and mental health, even supplements, as we've seen, is highly regulated and it's not easy to get into. 
So literally, you, you can be on the cutting edge of the etheric medicine revolution, which is hitting the planet. And uh, um, I, I probably don't need to mention this, but you definitely don't want to miss this opportunity because once it's taken off, it'll be too late and it won't be the same. The best roles and uh, finances will be snapped up. In other words, you'll have to wait in the queue. It may even be government regulated by then, which would be even worse. So this is your chance to be part of something new and significant and a pioneer in the next evolution of medicine before everyone else catches on to how good it really is. And you don't want to miss out by procrastinating or putting it off. Right now, you have the chance to be part of something new and pretty much name your price. As you can see, I'm really emphasizing the importance of this. Um, there is really no better time to get in on the ground floor than right now. Even the fact that you guys are sitting here listening to this webinar, um, um, that itself says that you guys um, are, are ahead of your time um, a little bit. Because right now, um, uh, all of us talking about this and doing it here, it's very much still ahead of time type of thing. As we've seen that um, there's still a lot of humanity who um, is disconnected and doesn't know about this stuff. Um, etheric medicine involves um, various um, clearing methods, such as fixing up tears in the auric or energetic field, healing golden web tears in your aura, so clearing mind control implants and energetic seals, removing curses, hexes, and spells, clearing energies absorbed from other people, releasing past lives, parents, and ancestors. All right, now we'll continue on with the new breed of medicine. So for centuries, the focus of Western medicine was healing the physical body in hospitals with, um, with different um, things, with different things like drugs or antibiotics, um, antipsychotics, and, um, and a bunch of other things. Um, in recent years, however, etheric medicine, that is, dealing with imprints, spears, or wounds in the etheric body, has been recognized as a powerful way to heal beyond your physical body. Once upon a time in the Western world, medicine focused on healing the physical body, as we've seen. But in recent times, we have seen a greater awareness on mental health, psychology, and mind-body science. It's no longer a taboo topic that people would mock or laugh at someone for. It's, it's now recognized, and we've seen that there are proper services to deal with that now. Basically, the exciting time is that the wisdom of the shamans is now in the Western world, um, what they've known for centuries. And so Ken Wilber, in his book, The Religion of Tomorrow, and Dr. Venus Williams, an author of PhD thesis on how, on how etheric tears, wounds, and past life imprints manifest in the physical body has predict, um, predicted that the next stage or phase of religion will be the growth of etheric medicine. Um, another shaman who's made similar predictions is Dr. Alberto Bellardo, an Amazon shaman. And since the early 2000s, we've seen mental health and mind-body-spirit connection become more recognized. Psychologists and mental health assistance is now more widely accepted mainstream um, compared to how it was uh, just 40 odd years ago. <clears throat> Meanwhile, etheric medicine has been slowly developing quietly in the background. <clears throat> We've already been seeing a rapid growth in the last 20 years of practitioners or healers who use machines. For example, Avatar and Infoceuticals. Um, which specialize in scanning the frequencies of the etheric body to see imprints or other blockages about to enter the physical world and be seen in your body. <clears throat> so, for example, Howard Hoxie in the 1930s was able to heal cancer using such devices. We've also been seeing an explosion of healers who know how to repair the etheric or auric body. Back then, of course, you'd like um, it'd be like finding a needle in a haystack. Whereas now, um, even with one Google search, you can find them. But by and large, um, this is still a relatively untapped area 
full of an opportunity for those who are on the cutting edge. As we mentioned earlier, you want to be part of the etheric medicine evolution in the early stages for clear reasons. Um, the first one being that it's ex very expensive to do a normal medical degree. You have to go to medical school or naturopathic university. You may even need therapeutic goods licensing to provide you any supplements or homeopathics. As well as the costs of it, you're also going to spend years before you get the degree, let alone being able to do something with it. You also need to get licensed to do a healing profession or being a psychologist. And you'll end up looking over your shoulder, hoping you're, caught, you're not caught if you don't. Once you undertake a normal healing profession, this unfortunately makes you just like everybody else and worse competing with them. So standing out will be even more difficult. All right, well, let's now explore what I meant by resolving etheric imprints. Now, what do I mean about anything unresolved or not dealt with etherically will manifest in the physical? Let's explain. If the imprint or blockage is not cleared from the etheric body by energy healing, homeopathics, or in some other means, inevitably it will result in disease, illness, accident, injury, etc. <clears throat> Louise Hay's book, um, You Can Heal Your Life, actually gives a lot of insight into this area. Now, in her case, for example, cancer was caused through a lot of resentment she was carrying and self-loathing, self-hatred. She even gave a very long list of illnesses and the metaphysics of how it all worked on the emotional um, and in the spiritual level. It's the do a list from her website. So um, each body part represents something different. For example, if you're experiencing pain or soreness in your legs, it's related to not moving forward somewhere in your life or not walking your true purpose. And... Another example here is asthma. And Bill McRae was the one who actually resolved this. So what he, he said was that um, it's, it's a child who has been smothered or suffocated by their mother emotionally and uh, in, in the energy level. Well, what he would say is give me the mother for three months and the child will be cured, which worked every time without fail. In fact, um, we actually have our own case of this example. When I was um, three years old, um, my mum was, um, was very much um, over um, smothering and over suffocating me energetically and emotionally because she had a lot of grief and unresolved um, issues going on at that time. And uh, well, thankfully, they knew this stuff. So then uh, my father was able to... Um, talk to her and tell, and tell her about the meaning. So she, of course, um, released and dealt with her grief, what was going on, sent me love, did the healing on me, and within not even a day, I was cured from it, and I haven't had asthma issues since. And uh, Warren, of course, well, um, you would remember that as well, right? And, uh, yeah, so... absolutely. Well, Bill McRae and this kind of stuff, the, the, he was onto this stuff 50 years before anybody else was doing it. Like he he got my father cured of very bad fibrositis and, um, you know, heart and, and, and his dad who had very bad gout and all that just by moving the energy. And he, he, he taught a lot of this and I managed to get hold of some of his books, which I haven't been able to find since and they're hard to get hold of. But Bill was a master in this area and he said that there really wasn't very much that wasn't happening in the body but never an origin in the energy or the physics. And Dr. John Sarno talks about this also about the back pain and about virtually most of it. And so I know whenever anything's going on in my body, there's something emotional or energetic going on. It's very rare, but it doesn't have some root in there somewhere. Like I had a fairly traumatic kind of shock about six weeks ago and just parts of my body flared up again. And I was trying everything to heal my elbow, but it flared up in like a balloon. And as soon as I, st I started doing some of the physical stuff, but what showed up very clearly was a very strong emotional root. And as soon as I was able to clear the energy and I did some pyramid work and energy work and the stuff we're teaching here, I noticed straight away my elbow started to heal. And now, of course, all the redness has gone now about any antibiotics, which I've been assured I was going to need. 
and just by using this kind of stuff. So, yeah, Bill McRae is a very good example, and that's how we fix William's asthma. We just spoke over him, shifted the energy of that kind of stuff. So um, same with James with his eczema, same with my gallbladder. So there, although there are physical things you can do to help the emotions, the emotions definitely have a huge part, and the etheric body ultimately as Dr. Williams and Dr. Bolalda says, is a source of just about everything and anything. So, yeah, I love this stuff. Mm. All right, brilliant. Thanks, Warren. And uh, um, Louise Hay also listed other things, such as back pain, which is linked to issues around support, either not being supported or not feeling supported. <laughs> and, uh, um, and also even related to finance, especially in the lower back. And then neck pain is in relation to inflexibility, unbending, stubbornness, not looking back there, and uh, basically not listening to new ideas. Eczema, so that that's another one that I healed up using this stuff. With um, eczema is linked to um, mental eruptions and very deep inner conflict, with um, and basically being off track. And what when so when the body flares up like that it's trying to put you back on the right direction. And that that's what happened in my case, and then my brother's as well. Uh, then there's also the gallbladder or liver, which is linked to very deep-seated rage, especially towards the father. Okay, so um, now just type in the chat um, uh, if, if there's any particular illness or disease that you've experienced in the past. And and if, if if any come to mind, just type which one it is. So whether it's back, whether it's neck, whether it's the head. Christine, neck, shoulders, and right knee. So um the neck we the neck of course Christine as we've talked about is the unbending stubbornness inflexibility not seeing what's back there um then the shoulders are very much linked to like short over shouldering or um, with too many burdens responsibilities then the knee for example is linked to um to ego not and not not bend not bending or not yielding when needed so um then Josh said allergies. So allergies, um I know that she mentioned around fear, anxieties that you carry. Marie arthritis in knees. So um the arthritis has been uh, linked to um a, a desire to punish and like carrying a lot of anger, which has not been released. I can I can talk I can talk on these ones. Um arthritis, Marie, was something which I had going on in my fingers the signs of it and the number one thing i was doing was using energy to not label it but a lot of uh, arthritis is heavily about criticism self being very self-critical and being very bitter and not enough self-love and knees are a lot to do with the kind of they like the pivot point for your life to move forward you know and the direction of your life so yeah but so so generally around criticism love I found a mixture of changing things I was speaking about myself as well as a bit of fasting or certain kind of dietary changes to detox myself from toxins and uric acid made a big difference. So, yeah, I mean, part of this healing certification that we'll be doing is teaching the practical as well as the actual um, energy, you know, because I find that you can approach things from an energetic side, but also there's practical things that can help speed up the energetic side as well. And allergies definitely i used to have lots and lots of allergies i don't have any anymore and that was just simply by changing my things allergies like what are you allergic to what are you reacting to you know things like that what are you oversensitive to and you know like priscilla is talking about um parasites and anxiety so yeah so depending on the age as well often kids pick up things from their parents as well and so once the parents start shifting stuff it can really help the kids as well especially the mother so Yes, but yes, there's a lot of physical stuff you can do as well as energetic stuff around that. Interesting, this William, isn't it? A lot of stuff showing up. Yeah, most definitely. There's a lot. Mm. So yeah, a few more here. Um, Carmen, back, breast cancer, gallbladder. So the back, as we discussed, is very much linked around support, not feeling supported, not getting support. 
um, then breast then breast cancer. So that of course would be around the chest. So that would be um, that would be a lot that you're carrying on the chest, which which needs to be released. Then the gallbladder rage. And that Marie says overweight. Yeah. So um, weight has um been has linked to emotion. So it's it means that it's like a protection. And um, so people are, who are carrying more weight than they would like, it means that they've got a lot of emotional turmoil or trauma which they need to heal from. And um, there's the physical component, of course, but then there's the most, uh, even more important is the emotional one. And that's why, for example, there's been cases where people can lose weight, but because they didn't heal emotionally, then they just put the weight back on since they didn't. Um, heal the the root cause. So it means things like their eating disorders or uh, whatever issue that um balloon their weight has not been healed and shifted. Then Scott, more limiting beliefs for me. Mm, yeah. So um, so if it's around more the mind, Scott. So that that of course would be um, it tends to be linked to programming, conditioning, what we've been taught. Or just um, or being afraid to embody our potential. So um, an exa another example here is Warren with his gallbladder, which he was able to um heal and release just by learning this energy and shifting it. And as I discussed before, me and my brother James with eczema, and my other brothers Ed and Joe, without finance, of course. Um, uh, as we said before, we are a lame duck and a slave to work. Being being in business as a healer is a very very different to actually being a healer. I'll explain what I mean. Now, being in business as a healer, the hard truth is you could be the best healer in the world, but if you don't know how to build a business, get clients and make sales, you'll have little to no money. As Michael Gerber taught in the E-Myth, being a business entrepreneur is very different to being a technician. In other words, running a business as a healer is very different to being a healer. It requires skills, knowledge, and commercial acumen. In other words, it's a whole skill in itself to sell your skills as a healer to generate income. And uh, it's, not, it's not as easy as it seems. And there is work. There is work and the dedication that needs to be put in to make it to make it successful. But like anything, when you stick with it and are consistent, the results come very quickly, and even quicker than you'd expect them to. Um, like anything, it's how much you put in, and it's universal law as well. Um, whatever energy you're putting out is the energy that you'll attract in return. So if you're putting out fuck all energy, then you'll you'll attract people and situations which will bring you into fuck all energy. Um, but if you um, embody the energy of love, of excellence, you'll attract people and situations that will bring you to love and excellence. Now, um, uh, um, as we said, there's a huge difference between in being a biz in business as a healer compared to just being one. Here's why. You can be a brilliant healer, but hopeless at running a business as a healer. Simply put, healer means you, that you just heal people. This is why many healers are broke or sick, for example. Being in business requires you to be able to do various things, such as getting clients, getting them to buy from you, setting the right price, bringing the money in, accounting for it, investing it, and the most important one, be able to keep it going sustainably and consistently. So what's the next step? Um, master it. So money flows in proportion to the value that you give. Um, as we just said before about putting out the energy. This is the natural law of reciprocity or fair exchange. So well, money will, will always go to those who put the most energy into, into it and, who, and making it happen. In order, so that's why, for example, there are a lot of dickheads out there who make a lot of money because although they may not be the people you'll have a beer with or want to be within 10 feet of, um, they, they are following the laws of wealth better than most of the population. 
which is why they're they they are where they're at. Um, when it comes to the universe, it doesn't give a fuck about um what's good or bad, right or wrong. Um, all it cares about is who's following the energy, who's following the laws. In order to receive large amounts of money to perform clearings and etheric healing, this is where you need to be the best in the world and a master in the new medicine. To master this new wave of medicine, it first starts with auric clearing. Um, what um, I like to call it um, the, the musical instrument foundation, like the foundation of energy healing, much like piano is the foundation of musical instruments, for example. So um, auric clearing is where it starts. Um, what that means, for those who may not be aware of it, um, it means clearing the auric field, the etheric body, and healing any tears in the etheric field. Um, so mastery of auric clearing is the gateway to becoming a world-class healer on the cutting edge of the new revolution of etheric medicine. Um, and so rather than just being ordinary, this is where you can be part of something new and at the cutting edge, getting in early, right before everyone else catches on. Imagine also getting trained by not just healers, but by people with significant business experience, former accountant, lawyer, financial planner, so you can learn the necessary skills to turn it into money and have it as a source of income. Okay, now let's look deeper into auric clearing. Now, we'll start with the chakras. Now, who here has um, some idea of chakras? Just type a Y in the chat if so. So, Christine, yeah. Josh, Scott. Okay, brilliant. So, what we'll do now is just explain a little bit on chakras. Now, as you can see here in this image, there's a lot of different colors, complexities in it but it all comes back to the same energy or same space. So what it says here, as you can see, is that the chakras, what they actually are, are, are energy centers um, or what keep us alive. Well, um, ultimately, that's where our energy or our life force flows through is our chakras. So when they're open, when they're healthy and used correctly, then that's when we can um, we can live the life we want. That's when we manifest abundance. That's when we um, live with happiness, joy, and love instead of fear, anger, and scarcity. So chakras draw energy in from and transmit energy into the unified fields of each dimension. Each chakra has um, carries its own, um, its own frequency or energy. So And it each has a primary color. What it says here is that it carries as its primary color the hue or frequency associated with the wavelength of the dimensional frequency band to which the chakra corresponds. M meaning that um, when it comes to our chakras, there's, it's, there's constantly energy that's being drawn in from them. The chakras are constantly drawing energy from and transmitting it into each dimension. So meaning that um, our spirit and earth connection are very much linked and that they're, they're not separate like a duality way of thinking, but rather one and the same and where we can actually operate in both in one existence. So, um, for example, the first chakra is red. So if you visualize red, it'll be the frequency or energy of the first chakra. The second one, it would be the frequency or energy of the set, the sexual or some um, creativity energy. So each of them have their own meanings. Scott, you don't have to bring this up if you don't want to, but does fluoride block the capability of the pineal gland? Absolutely, Scott. Um, that's why fluoride is so damaging because it. Um, it, it is capable of blocking the pineal gland. And it's a big part of why they have deliberately put it in the water, into toothpaste, and into a lot of shit. So it blocks people from accessing their third eye, or the sixth chakra, which represents awareness, represents clarity. 
So just to sum it up, the first chakra represents survival. The second one, sexuality, creativity. The third one that represents self-esteem, self-power. Fourth one, love and trust. The fifth one, uh, communication. Sixth chakra, clarity, awareness. The seventh one, connection to the cosmic universe. Then, of, then we also have the eight morphogenetic chakras that exist in our etheric body. Four at the top, four at the bottom, which are below our head and our feet. Now, auric clearing is another word for etheric healing. Your auric field is your energetic or your light body, like we've been talking about. And everyone, of course, knows about the physical body. But yet at the spiritual and energetic level, there are many different energetic layer bodies, much like an onion or multi-layered cake. When we become aware of this, this is when we realize just how much the blockages and attachments need to be cleared. And ultimately, it's our energetic bodies which help us to ascend and astral travel, access God, be omnipresent, etc. Unfortunately, on the planet, many people are not even aware that they have an energetic body. Most people on the planet are also blocked in their auric field by various issues such as karmic blocks, attachments, demons, etc. And auric attachments are energetic blockages and entities which exist inside your auric field. So this also means they exist in your 15 chakras. And there are many different types of attachments we have, which can be barbs, hooks, webs, wires, demons, etc. There's a whole um, variety of them, and each for different reasons. Auric attachments, as you can imagine, cause a lot of problems when they're not cleared. Now, clearing auric attachments is critical if you desire to have quality relationships, make more money, access the higher realms and dimensions, connect with your spirit guides, etc. The problem is when they're not cleared, let alone being made aware of, they make you sick, broke, attract unwanted money experiences, etc. In other words, because that, that energy is in your field, it means you're also radiating or putting it out to the universe. So the universe will end up attracting you people or situations that bring you into that frequency until it's shifted. Now, these are, um, are some of the different auric attachments, which we'll um, go into briefly and summarize each one. First one is ids, which is like a soul fragment that's alive and well affecting you from the past. Basically, these are created when you experience trauma and go what's called an, into an analogical state of mind where basically um, you experience something so traumatic that you froze for that moment in time. Like if you walked home to your partner cheating on you, if you lost everything in your business, or if you, or if you, or if you um, injured yourself unexpectedly, um, could be anything. But either way, um, when you experience that trauma and, and enter that state of shock and hurt in that frozen moment in time, that's when your soul's energy fractures and creates like a darker and wounded version of that soul piece. And that's basically what an id is, when you're operating on hurt and wounds instead of who you actually are. And the occupants um, are the next one, which are created when you um, experience, have an emotional charge about a particular issue or person, whatever it may be. Now, for example, you may be very angry at someone who, um, who who disrespected you, but you didn't speak your truth and set any boundaries. So um, what can then happen is that, um, that the more you talk about it and think about that problem, instead of talking to that person, setting the boundaries and resolving it, you hold on to it and you start to charge it with more and more emotional energy, more and more anger. And it, it then becomes an occupant and it goes from a negative thought to a negative thought form. And basically what will then happen is that it will attract you people or situations which will bring you back there. Um, whether it's that same person or someone like them until that's shifted. And then you have 
wormholes, which are like um, doorways or gateways in our auric field that allow dark entities to feed off of our energy. And port, and then you have portals, which are um, slits, like slits in the auric field, which that which open up as soon as we absorb energy from somebody else. Basically, it's when we feel so bad for someone that we take on their energy and their issues as if it's our own. And that, that of course, has potential to cause all kinds of trouble, such as low energy, fatigue, depression, energy loss, lack of happiness. And then there's the personalities, which are like the shadow selves of the ids. So they, these um, are what um, are created once the id is formed. So the id is basically the soul fragment, the hurt, the wounded version. Then the personality is what manifests from the energy of that id. The next one we have is the archetypes, which um, the way you can think of it is like the holographic way that the brain stores an attitude, belief, thought, anything related, and then colors that into your reality. Now, um, now, an example of an archetype playing out would be like if, say, a man lost his his mother very young, and uh, and so then, of course, but but the grief the, and the issue there has been unresolved. Um, so, well, what can then happen is that he it can easily manifest as the man going into like a darker version of masculinity, like where he where, like where he'll where he can easily become, say, an abuser, for example, of women, since he never had that um that female role model growing up that he could look up to and learn from as to um how to treat um the feminine. So that that would be that can be an example of the archetype itself playing out, and then once it's cleared and shifted, then that's when the man can return back to his original state and become more of a healthy type of masculine where he's strong, where he's strong but yet loving. And uh, then you have the discarnates. So these are beings who have died but they haven't passed through. In other words, they're souls who don't inhabit a body, and they're in they're in the fourth dimension. So um, it's it's a it's a terrible existence for these guys because, well, for example, if one of them was a smoker while they were alive, I mean, if um, if any of us were, we could easily just go down to the shops, buy a carton of smokes, and uh, light away. Whereas these guys can't do that since they're not in a physical body, and so what they do is they'll uh, um, attach themselves to someone with an energy like them. So a chain smoker like them and then feed off them like food until they're um, guided to go where they need to go. Okay, now we'll discuss the auric as, but before we get into that, um, just type in the text chat um, if any of these auric attachments resonate with you, if you feel like you've got these right now. And if so, just type which one. got maybe personalities um you, yeah you would know if you have personalities so um th those get created when the ids are formed in other words when you experience the trauma and then you feel the shock the hurt and you freeze for that moment in time what happens is the id becomes formed it replaces the real soul fragment so the, the real soul of you and that's when the personality create um creates itself. All right, how about anyone else? Okay, no one else. We can go on. So um auric tear is a tear or fracture in your auric field, which is caused by auric attachments. And they of course eventually manifest into the physical world. Now, here's what I mean. Now, portals, as an example, would manifest as depression, low energy, chronic fatigue, health problems. Occupants would manifest um, whatever is going on in the thought process. Um, or, or in other words, what they manifest from traumatic or emotional charging events. Now, as an example, if you've experienced several loss around money investments, you can guarantee it's that there's etheric um, blockages there. 
Similarly, if you have auric attachments or tears or imprints in your liver, gallbladder or pancreas, inevitably you will manifest a health disorder in these organs. Nothing you do in the physical world will work till you fix it etherically. And uh, in science, they pr they've been proving that consciousness precedes matter and not the other way around, meaning that it starts in the consciousness, which then translates physically. As an example, if you've had several loss around money, there's th then, uh, then you can guarantee it's etheric, as we said. Now, let's just say you were swindled by someone badly and lost a whole lot of money. The auric tear around that could be from a past life where you did it to someone else. Or if not, you grew up in a family who feared money and went to uni and had normal jobs. And then the voices playing out, such as I can't afford it, work hard to make money, money doesn't grow on trees, amongst other related ones, can play out and cause the losses. Now, how do you clear auric tears? In order to do this, you need to do what's called an auric clearing. What, what this type of particular clearing does is it focuses on clearing the auric field or etheric body. During the session, we scan the multidimensional light body on all 15 levels. The, the auric clearing uses scalar language, energy directing techniques, and sacred codes to communicate with your higher self and subconscious mind to permanently clear attachments. What then happens is you'll receive golden soul fragments which were lost previously from past lives and the current one now. Then at the end of the session, we do a download for the higher self to give new chords, new templates, and new soul programming. So what then happens is you'll end up radiating and embodying a higher frequency. Then your reality will change by being able to attract people, places, times, things, and events which resonate with your new higher frequency. In other words, you'll start to um, attract people and situations which bring you into love and bring you peace as opposed to bringing you fear or bringing you frustration. So um, what auric clearing also does is clearing ids. It repairs tears in the auric field, clears discardits and voices in your head, closes portals and wormholes, and restores the golden soul fragments. Um, this is where it gets exciting and gets interesting. The beauty of learning or at clearing is that you can easily become a certified healing master. Um, of course, you must learn to shield yourself and your clients from any unhelpful energies blocking them from accessing higher dimensions. And, um, and, this, is, and this is where the auric clearing helps you to do this. Okay, now we'll just go through some testimonials of people who have worked with me before starting with Dr. Shelby Atchison, all the way from Canada. And so this one was a very interesting case. She, um, so she said that her heart rate variability went from an average of 54 to 81. So she wanted this to be, number to be close to 100 as possible. Then her heart rate lowered from a weekly average of 54 to 50, which is also significant. What she ended up telling me was it was amazing to see objective numbers applied to energy work. And the, so this is where the energy clearing gets exciting too. You can actually help people um, get results like this, where um, objective data can even be measured into it. And then Ashton Jane from Queensland. So she'd never heard of auric or theric clearing um, before she, before she um, talked to me. But she got curious after we had a call where I was talking about it. So she ended up jumping in, signed up for a few sessions with me. And she, she noticed that she was calmer, less reactive to situations and handled stress a lot better. She was also able to feel more grounded and not much wanting to run away from the world. Then over time, the, um, the things started to manifest much easier for her. Life became more um, less chaotic, more in flow, and uh, and her family in, in became stronger together as well. And even her partner Jesse um, signed up for a few sessions with me as well, and he or he too was able to see shifts and manifestations happening easier than previously. 
And then the final one here is Sheldon from British Columbia. So um, he was first introduced to me by Warren about five years ago. So over the years, he's done several courses from me and one-on-one -on -one sessions. Then he's only mentioned that I've helped him immensely on problems that the medical society couldn't, that I'm the real deal, genuine, that he wouldn't hesitate to recommend me to help you with any issue that you have. So Sheldon um, is um, was one of my first clients, and he's still working with me to this day, for example. Okay, so does anyone have any questions before we get into the clearing? Okay, no questions. Brilliant. Okay, what we'll do now is um, I'll turn my camera off just while the clearing is commencing, just to eliminate all distractions. So um, um, well, the way that we'll be doing this is that I'll be doing an auric clearing for everyone here on the first two chakras specifically. And uh, then we'll continue on with the next stage of the webinar. Is everyone happy with that? Okay, excellent. Everyone now just focus on the code and inhale it to your first two chakras. Just imagining it there and close your eyes. And start to take some deep breaths, breathing in through the nose for a count of four. Holding it for a count of four. And exhaling through your mouth for a count of eight. Breathing in through the nose for four. holding it for four and exhaling through the mouth for a count of eight. Just con and just continue that breathing process to relax your mind. We now call upon the five we now we now call upon the golden vortex and the spinning tornado going clockwise and the bright white crystalline pyramid surrounding me and each person here. We call upon the five archangels Uriel, Gabriel, Raphael, Michael, and Metatron, Christ and Mother Mary and Babaji, and Wisdom Melchizedek. Only those who are aligned with the word of God and the Christ consciousness. And we clear and repel any false spirit guides, negative energies, outside interferences, unhelpful entities, or anything else related to be fully cleared out now. And we give love, thanks, and gratitude to all beings that are currently present. It is commanded by the laws of the golden liquid realms and our chemical powers 
that this Triveca code be u be used to clear any ids or occupants from each person here in their first chakra and in the second chakra and restore the golden soul fragments into both chakras and we also clear any personalities or archetype from there as well and remove any discarnates um, around by providing a third order escort, contain them if they resist, transport them to the astral planes justly earned now. And we also close off any portals or wormholes to other astrals, dimensions, beings, or lifetimes permanently. Now infusing each person here with the divine love and higher frequencies justly earned now to Asia in today. We also clear any dark energies or frequencies from each person here in their first two chakras. In their aura, burning it with a golden liquid light, scrambling them. Clearing any heaviness and reactivating their first and second chakra into their sexuality, their creativity, and into their basic survival. We now rebalance each person here in all areas of their life, pour in the golden liquid light, send in the love from the higher mother and father. And clear any remaining blockages or imprints or its or occupants or anything else related justly earned now and bring back or any other golden soul fragments justly earned now Okay, now when you're ready, you can open your eyes and just type in the text chat how you're feeling after that clearing. Scott says more calm and relaxed. Excellent, Scott. That's awesome. Christine feels calm, feels lighter. Brilliant, Christine. Yeah, there certainly was the relaxing energy at the end there. Marie, sleepy, relaxed. Brilliant, Marie. Might be time for a nap after, right? <laughs>
Josh, body soft and feeling peaceful. Excellent, Josh. Yeah, the clearing, it certainly breaks the hard walls down and brings us into peace. Okay, now everyone just take a glass of water just to integrate the clearing. Any final questions or comments before we move to the next stages of the webinar? Scott, none, thanks for that. Yeah, no worries, thanks Scott. Okay, no other questions or comments. We'll now move to the next stage. So um, like as I said at the beginning, um, I was going to be um, giving you an exciting opportunity or offer to further your education and knowledge um, on being a healer. So right now, it could not be a better time to gain the unfair advantage and rig the game so that the odds are always in your favour. So you've been listening to me now for well over an hour. You've heard my results and hopefully by now, you know what I've taught can help you. You now can see why I believe that my system for becoming a master certified healer and accessing the infinite information of the universe based on proven, tested, credible scientific methods, as well as my own personal experience on top of that, is one of the greatest abilities known to man for clearing blockages and diseases right before they manifest physically and also making a stable income out of it. You've even seen the results of how everyday people just like you have learnt my step-by-step -step or a clearing the healing certification system and are now using it for their own health and their, their family and anything else. So if you'd like to let me help you implement my blueprint into your life as well, I would be very delighted to help you out. And here's the best way that I know how. So who here would like me to hold their hand and teach them everything I know about becoming a successful master healer by knowing how to clear any blockage, disease or illness from the etheric body whilst also being handsomely paid for doing it? Type a Y in the chat if so. Josh, interested? Okay, brilliant. Um, um, or, or if not this, um, uh, who would like to do it to master healing for for yourself and for your family? So in either case, just type a Y. So Carmen said yes, awesome. All right, so um, I'm continuing on. So Scott, interested, but it will need to come down the track. We'll consider it for myself. Yeah, I'm uh, brilliant, Scott. So like they say, right, there's always a divine right timing for everything. And I truly believe the ability to become a certified master healer and doing it successfully from the comfort of your own home is one of the most powerful, liberating forces known to man for ordinary people to be set free of any etheric blocks and create the life they want by knowing how to perform energy clearings. So introducing to you um, the Auric Clearing Healing Certification Program. This here is where you can learn the exact method that I use to do auric clearings and gain an unfair advantage in clearing health challenges and much more. Like I said, um, uh, and it can be not only used to create another source of income, but even if it's just for healing yourself and your family, it's still it's very effective either way. Um, so um, this is a 15, a 15 weekly online modules delivered in webinar formula format masterclass. So it's a 15 class masterclass program, in other words. Um, I'll now go through what each um, one covers in these weekly modules. First one being the foundations of auric clearing. And just to be upfront, we started our first class just last week and we'll be doing the second class in a couple of days. 
the date and the time we'll be running them each week um, will be covered in just a moment. So the foundations of Oric Clearing is what we started with, where, where we um, covered the foundation of Oric Clearing, as well as why people carry blockages in all 15 levels of awareness. The second class would be Oric Attachments and Full Oric Clearing. This is where we explore the different Oric Attachments, chakras in more depth, and you receive a full auric clearing from me to, to shift any unseen blockages or attachments within your auric field. In the third class, um, we, we dive into the process of performing an auric clearing, where you learn how an auric clearing is performed and practice tapping into energy using the left hand. And then we've got the weekly modules four to seven. The fourth week is being a healing assistant where we start to apply your auric clearing training by bringing a guest to the class with each person clearing a specific attachment. For example, one person can clear occupants, one person discarnates, and it goes on. Then five to seven is auric clearing practice, where each person practices the full auric clearing protocol on guests, which we will be bringing on in these classes as well. And then uh, eight to 12. So at the eighth class will be auric clearing tests and quizzes, where you'll be tested on your auric clearing skills and knowledge with different tests and quizzes. In the ninth class will be the assessment results, where we'll be assessing your results from the auric clearing tests and quizzes. And then the, and the 12 is growing a healing practice, where we go into the steps and process required to successfully grow a healing practice utilizing business skills. And we also cover Frank Kern's unique seven-figure webinar formula. And then uh, in, in the modules 13 to 15, the final ones, then it will the 13th one will be business and seven-figure webinar formula tests and quizzes. So this is where you'll be tested on your skills and knowledge in regards to business and seven-figure webinar formula with tests and quizzes. Um, then the 14th one is business and seven-figure webinar formula assessment results where we assess your results from the business and seven-figure webinar formula tests and quizzes. Then in the final class um, is the integration where you share your experience. This is the final session that integrates everything together and we have an open Q&A and you share your greatest learnings and experiences from the program. We also go into the next steps on what to take after the program. So um, all up, this is one unit and is valued at five thousand. So, uh, but today we actually have a special offer for fast decision makers. So, like we said, this one unit by itself is five thousand. The actual investment that we'll be charging today is two nine nine seven. So, where you can save two thousand and three. Now, who here would like this if it was risk-free? Type a Y in the chat if so. Carmen, yes. Marie, yep. Yeah. Excellent. Now, in this program, um, your success is very much guaranteed. Um, uh, well, um, we're that confident that you can we can get you the results promised here, that we have a money-back guarantee in place. So you can get your money back if after the first two modules, you're not completely blown away or dissatisfied your results. All you need to do is message us anytime before the third one and we'll refund you. No questions asked. So Carmen says, are there printed materials provided? Um, that's correct, Carmen. Um, it, Anyone who signs up for this program will automatically receive a confirmation email that will come with an Auric Clearing manual. So it does have a manual um, that that you that you will get. So basically, here you literally can't lose. I mean, just imagine the opportunities that you could manifest knowing how to use a skill like this. Imagine how much your health could um be, could improve. Imagine how much you could transform the lives of your friends and family as well, and other people and humanity. 
this very same protocol that I teach is responsible for helping people to create the life and finances that they want. And I also have one last bonus to add to make this an absolute no brainer. Um, so we have a bonus program that, that you can get. If you sign up for the healing certification, you, 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 you'll receive free access to our presently running Be Your Own Medical Medium program with a 497 value, what we sold it for. And in fact, this is actually great, great timing because um, this week will be the final class of the program before it becomes a recorded online course. So this is everything you get all up in the certification program. The Auric Clearing Healing Certification Program, an online 15 class masterclass at 5,000, and Be Your Own Medical Medium Program, a presently running course about to finish this week, 497. So this is the day that we will be running the program each week on every Wednesday at one o'clock Perth time and three o'clock um, over East. And the number of places available are 12. So we've already got a couple of people in the program. So there are still 10 slots available for those who are keen. Um, and all up, this is two units and you, um, you get all of that for today's investment of 2997. And we also have a monthly payment plan available. So this here, um, this here is the link to sign up um, um, right here. And this is the link um, to book a call if you want to discuss more and if you have any further questions or queries. So in fact, what I'll do now is um, I'll, I'll place these just into the text chat. So for those who are keen to book a call, the, um, the first link um, will be the discovery call link where you can book a call if you have any further questions or queries. And we also have this link to sign up for those who are keen to get in a bit earlier. Can, I, can everyone see it in the text chat okay? If type a Y if so. Scott, yes, excellent. And uh, you can also email me personally, William at theawakeningwithin.net. Okay, so are there any questions? All right, no questions so far. Um, okay, so um, Warren, do you have anything you'd like to add? No, look, but basically it's, yeah, look, I've done a few of these in my time, these certifications and, I originally did it more for myself to master it and clear, keep my own energy feel clear. But eventually, before I knew it, I'm now doing it for clients as I'm as we're doing it for you. So it's a very medicine and mastering it is definitely the way of the future. It's something which I use heavily myself, for even when I've got stuff going on, when I've got things happening. I use it just I've been using it most days on different things for myself or members of my family and for clients just to basically scan yourself and keep yourself clean. In a way, I see it a bit like being in a bath or whatever. If you don't take a bath or shower regularly, you're going to get dirty. So, yeah, look, basically, if you're interested, just um, want to find out more about healing. That's, like I said, the reason I signed it up originally. I think my first healing certification that I did cost me um, $12,000 US. <laughs> you're getting a better deal than I got. But basically, yeah, I... I basically flew to Philippines and did this. So, because I was that keen to learn and master this stuff. And I remember the first time I healed myself from food poisoning when I was in, in Singapore and I had no way to get to a doctor where I was. It was one of my most exciting moments of my life. And I used it to grow my hair back as well when I was starting to lose hair about 12 years ago to the point where my hairdresser said to me, what have you been doing to your hair? She said, if you been getting a treatment, all your hairs got thicker and growing back. So... Yeah, look, I strongly encourage you to have a call with William or if you're interested and be part of this. So, yep, basically just complete the discovery call. We, I said to William just to give one last opportunity for people. We've already got a few people in it. Uh, he's done the intro call last week, but you can always catch up on that pretty easy. So just type of me if you're, if you're planning to book in for a discovery call. So 
a couple have already raised their hand, but just type of me in the chat if there's anyone who's really interested. I'm getting a couple of hands raised. Yep. This way, just give a bit of an idea. Yep. Scott will send an email. Marie. Yep. Okay. Great. So yeah, just um, book into the call or send us an email, and we will organise to the chat with you. So that's all I got to say. So, um, yep. Okay. No, thanks, everyone. It's been great to have you on. I appreciate you investing your time to come and listen to us. Mm, yeah, um, thank you, Warren. And um, I'll I'll take my time now to thank you all for taking the time, the effort, in, and the commitment to show up here today. And uh, I I applaud your effort to come. So we'll now continue on. Now, um, any final questions or comments before we end officially for today? Scott, thanks, guys. No questions. Um, Marie, thanks, William. Yeah, no worries, guys. Thanks, Marie. Thanks, Scott. Okay, no further questions or comments. Well, um, thanks again, everybody. So, um, I look forward to I look forward to working with those or to um to or chatting with you for those interested. And um, otherwise, um, I'll see you all next time. Have a great rest of your day, evening, wherever it is you are. Take care of yourselves. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.